Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. It's been a minute since I've made a video. We have made a ton of progress on a bunch of little things and we're gonna go over all that right now. We're gonna start in the back of the car today. Actually, we got the tank. I ended up going ahead and lizard skinning the, just the ice water side of the tank. I think that'll make most sense. Let the heat dissipate out of the aluminum on the hot side with the fuel so it doesn't get too hot and let the ice stay cool in here. Another thing that I ended up doing is mounting the fuel pump controllers for the fuel pump that I'm gonna raise the car up and we'll talk about here in just a second. Up she goes. So under the car, I actually went ahead and mounted up. This is the fuel pump we're gonna be running. It's the Holly VR2. You can get this thing with either a 16 in or a dual 10 in, then it's a 10 out. All the filters are dash 12 if you go with the VR2 filters. So we're starting to plumb all that. I actually have a filter mounted right up in there. It's a little hard to see up in the bumper. Then the line's gonna come out around, tie into the pump, go up and over the rear end. The wiring goes up out of the car right there and we should be good to go. But this thing is super sick. This is like almost six and a half gallon per minute of fuel. So a ton of fuel, way more than we need. I think it could almost support the car on one of the pumps. And then being a drag and drive build, what I really like about this is that I have a whole nother pump. So you always have a second pump kind of there in case you need to get home or maybe make a low boost pass on it or whatever it is. And then another thing we mounted up was this massive Dorelli transmission cooler. So I actually went with pretty much one of the biggest ones they have. This thing is a monster. It's got the big aluminum core in it. It mounts right where the original fuel tank was at. And then it's got about six or seven inches to the rear end here but the tires only got about four inches to go till it hits. So this should be about perfect. We got our little temperature switch off the side of it there. And then the cooler's plumbed for 8AN fittings. So big 8AN line. This is what the car used to run for fuel was 8AN lines. And that's actually what's gonna be the transmission fluid line size now. So pretty crazy, gigantic, lots of cooling, all the cooling. I wanted something that was really big all the efficiency i had like this little single one that used to mount right under here and now that's gone and now we got this big big cooler mounted up here in the rear end so still got to plumb it still got to hook all that up but at least it's mounted physically inside the car I'm working our way up to the front of the car we ended up getting our ppp shifter the precision performance product shifter in the car and up going with the all blacked out i think it looks super sick inside compared to like the floor being black, the shifter's all black. Also went for the optional air shift, because, so I wanna be able to hook up an air solenoid, it'll activate the shifter, the Holly will trigger the shifter at certain RPM points, and it will shift itself, so super nice setup. We already went ahead and drilled the hole, ran the line down through the floor, I need to put a little grommet right there, and hooked it up to the transmission. It was actually worked out really good, I had to reverse this bracket, because we were already into the dash a little bit, some little standoffs makes it sit in the real nice and flat. And just like that. And then AJ's over today helping me get some more things done inside the car. We're gonna get all the ECUs mounted and all the wirings. Keep working on that. He's working on the steering wheel if you can figure out how to put it on. Yep, nice. So he's getting some button brackets put on over there so we can look at all that. We're gonna get the dash mounted too. Got a little blinker switch because street car. And now, here it is guys, check this thing out. You ready? Ready? <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going with the elephant trunk on this unit and it is gigantic and it is crazy. And this is what I was working on last night was, you know, taping these pipes together. But I think we're, that's about where we're at. So I ended up getting my billet Holly 105 millimeter throttle body in, ended up flipping it over. So then my Maven throttle cable mount will come off of here. I can move this up if needed and then I might have to rebrace it. But that will come up and over and then we'll run the wire, the throttle cable to here. 105 millimeter to four inch pipe to the shear fabric cooler. So this thing is ridiculous. Watch, I'm gonna, we'll go over here. So like if you're looking at it from outside the car, like it is ridiculous. It's so big and it's got tons of room. It looks like a gosh dang bridge up there. But I think it looks incredible. It's definitely gonna stand out and be totally different. There's not gonna be another white F-body like this one. That is for sure. What do you think? Massive, bro. <laughs> it's, it's pretty ridiculous when you first see it. And I'm gonna tell you guys, like, videos and picture do not do this thing justice. It is massive. But this thing doesn't sound like Dumbo excited blowing its trunk, I don't know, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it is definitely, it looks like a, 
Look at gosh, they all have a set. I also got these Fab Aluminum valve covers, a new set, because the other ones had like the wrong fittings and all sorts of stuff, and I wanted to make it right. And then they also had these universal coil mounts that I actually ended up cutting these tabs. There's two up here. I cut them off, made one tab back here. So off of three bolts, and then I welded the little mounts on. I got some mounts off of eBay, and these will sit like right about there. So that allows me to mount the new Holly Smart coils on the valve covers. There wasn't necessarily, with the height of the rockers in these heads, there wasn't necessarily just a, a perfect bolt in option. There are a couple billet valve covers out there. I mean, cost wise and being able to kind of make it where I want it and place the coils where I wanted them. And also the fittings, I was able to do everything I wanted with just using a nice bare set. So I just bought a bare set, modified them and made them what I wanted. So as you guys can see, we got wiring coming in. We have the tube on, we have the throttle body. Like everything is starting to work its way forward. I undid just a little bit of wiring here to get up to the throttle body so I can gain some uh, wires up to there. We'll reloom that. I also got this crazy brushless fan from Dorelli too. Those guys, I called them, I talked to them, I said, this is what I need to cool. They said, we got this crazy 15 inch brushless fan and it should do the job. It's got a really powerful motor. So these things hum and they, they scream. So we got this on here. I might need to build a little guard. It can be a, it's really designed to be on the inside with the guard on the other side of it but I don't have the room here. It worked out perfect. It, you can't flip it around and like reverse the polarity, but it can still become a pusher by just moving it to the outside. So I might come up with some little cover guard or something. I mean, I think about it, you know, a lot of cars have mechanical fans that you're not protected by or whatever. I guess they should have some sort of little protector shroud. One of the last things too we've done is modified the water pump, put big 20 AN fittings, use this like Earl's adapter that takes and makes it into a typical thermostat inside here and then you put that on 20 an lines still got a couple more fittings coming for that and it's been just a bunch of work on it order it so as you guys see over the last few weeks like that is a what we just went over it was a huge amount of time and energy and it's a bunch of small things just getting stuff mounted thinking through the process starting the plumb little like lines and fittings and getting the pump mounted and where's it going to fit and is it going to work and how are we going to wire it and it's just all those things, sometimes you gotta turn the camera off and just get to work and figure it all out. So we're back in. I figured we've made enough progress to show you guys without showing you how I make a little bracket. AJ's hanging out the dang windshield. <laughs> and we have, we're making progress, guys. It's, it's getting close. You can kind of start seeing what the car looks like with the fender back on it and all of that stuff. So it's a long time coming, but I am super stoked it's back on all four. So we're just gonna jump in and start working on this intake pipe. He's gonna mount a bunch of stuff. We're just gonna keep moving forward on this deal. The elbow actually points kind of up. I'm gonna cut a little bit of an angle here. As you guys can see, actually, when you were seeing it earlier, this was stuck all the way in there. So now I need to cut it back. But then I'll have to either run like a bead, uh, like a little bead roll across here or put a weld or whatever. So it has something to seal against kind of like on here. It has this rough edge and then I'll end up putting a coupler here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a coupler here and then it has the, the vibrant here. So then everything has a little bit of movement, especially with how long this pipe is. And then uh, if we end up running into any issues where it wants to blow this off, I might weld a vibrant type clap here. I could always come up with a little mount too that comes up and ties up here to uh, mount that to it. One other thing, using the Holly Bill of Throttle Body, the CID is actually designed for like a Wilson, like 105, but I don't think that one had like an IAC. I want to run an LS style. So what I did is I ended up drilling through here and then actually tapping it and mounting this throttle body on there. So it works super good. Everything looks great. It clears real nice. You can see the bottom of it there, but it clears up top. So everything's good and uh, being flipped. Now, like I was saying earlier, you can run it low. So got this tacked. Taped everything back up to make sure nothing moved. And that is sitting just barely inside the lip there. So I think that's about perfect. AJ's actually working on getting the little 6.86 inch dash from the Holly mounted. And man, that looks that looks pretty freaking sweet. Minus the, the, the blueprint on it. Maybe we should wipe that off, but hey, looks pretty great. And then the Dominator, EGTs, and the race pack all mounted in here so we can really start laying out all the wires and figure out where everything's gonna go. The intake tube is all Weld it up all the way around. Now I'm gonna install the blow off valve. So I actually got a pro port from Turbo Smart. This thing like flows quite a bit more than the race port. I think one of these is good to like 3,200 horsepower. So I can run one. I think we're gonna go somewhere about like right there on the seam. So I'm gonna mark that out, draw around it, cut a hole, 
fit it up and then weld it in there so either way i can go and i can run my lines up and over to like these lines or go down and into the intake area so gonna get this thing installed the blow off valve mount is all on there and good to go i need to get a 3 8 npt tap i'm gonna weld a little piece here to screw in my intake air temp sensor and then these guys not sure what they're doing but they're doing something over here with a whole bunch of wires uh, so aj wanted to uh, tie all these real nice and tight with some string so then it makes everything you know it holds it together and we don't have just you know wires just kind of spreading apart and come back together throughout the harness so getting her tied together huh yes sir Ooh so i'll make it real nice and they've been working on figuring out exactly what we need to go to the back to the front inside to the left to the right left right front, upside back, down up down side side wires going everywhere in this thing you guys are getting those wires all situated right so we don't have wires everywhere yes ma'am oh cool but you know doing all this wiring is cool and all but we ain't got no gas pedal I got some more wires. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so this is the J2B, I think? J2A harness, and this has the extra O2 sensor wire in it, and then a whole bunch of inputs and outputs that would become like the dome pressure sensor and all that type of stuff. So uh, now that they're getting stuff somewhat situated and we still have a bazillion wires, we might as well hey, we got add some more to it. It's looking pretty nice. I don't what? know what you got going on there. You got all sorts of stuff going on there. Right, right here? There, but yeah. Well, that's where we ran out on this run. Oh, and, and then we tied right over that. So actually, like right here would be out. your ground and your third oh, yeah. brake light right here. And that can go up. So your your ground can go to chassis somewhere over in this area. Nice. And then your third brake light, we can um, solder or whatever we need to do to make it go up and down the hatch and, and across. The hatch. So the third brake light in this thing is all the way up yonder way. So we gotta meters. come all the way through there, up there, out there, wire to that. So all the wires everywhere. But yeah, so this actually, I believe, will end up going to that O2 sensor, and then the one that is already tied into the main harness will come over to this because most of the cars go to the right side on the holly. Uh, but I need to verify that. But just just want to get these out see what all is in this harness to make sure that there isn't something really that we need to run with anything else in the car but really they're tying up all the chassis side of the wiring and then this will be all the ends of the wiring which will kind of be in a separate loop guys that is just ridiculous so i'm back over here the next day gonna keep working on a bunch of little things so i think i'm gonna start off with putting my intake air temp sensor right here so here's the plug from the holly i got an intake air temp sensor I need to actually tap it in. It's not a push in like a stock one. So I'm going to weld a little spot on the tube. Drill, tap, which I just got back from the store getting a 3 8 NPT tap. So it feels like I've went to the store 4 million times to get all the little things. But I'm also trying to buy all the things that I need to build a car like this so I have them for the future. So if I need to fix anything or redo anything or build something new, I will have what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and get this intake pipe fully finished up and we can move on to the next thing. All right, guys, so what I do is I'll weld like a little spot weld of weld. I'm kind of building it out and around. And I'll keep doing that until I have enough material to be able to drill and tap the 3 8 NPT. So I'm actually making, you know, in that one area, it like at least an eighth, eighth inch thick, if not maybe a little bit more, 3 16 or whatever thick. So then we can drill, tap, and it has enough thread there to grab onto the sensor. I've also done the same thing on like radiators and stuff like that, where you gotta put, um, you know, like overflow spots or like the vent coming out of the LS, where you gotta let the uh, overflow flow back into the radiator tank. I'll put those there as well. So, you know, this pretty handy little trick, as long as you can weld, it just adds material and you don't even have to worry about like putting a nut on there or the push through ones that can push out or any of that stuff. This should work just fine for this. Well, other than running out of gas right here at the very end and it's starting to kind of get gross, so I need to actually go get more gas and weld that up. I was actually able to drill and tap that hole so you guys can kind of see that's how that works out. Then you just go in. We'll throw some tape on this and fully seat it once I get this finished welded, but I don't want to leave it kind of gross like that. I need to finish that up, but uh, try to figure out what in the heck was going on. Then I looked up at my little gauge on my welder over there and it's empty. So, uh, and today's Saturday, so that really sucks because I can't go get more gas for the welder until Monday. 
And now we have an intake air temp sensor right there, which obviously it's gonna get warm by the time it gets to the engine, but this is always a good base to always have something. I was gonna go up here, but didn't want the wire all the way out in the, like, you know, in the wind and everything. So I figured if it's sitting here like this, at least I know what the air temp is coming out of the intercooler. And then obviously it'd be offset by a little bit because of the intake, but it shouldn't be too much crazier than that. I mean, the intake will heat soak, so it'll gain heat there. But even if you pull temp here, 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 it's still in the sense get warmer as it goes travels down. The intake tube is pretty much all done other than I might weld my bead on here for my silicone coupler, but I'll probably get a silicone coupler first and then uh, we'll see how that plays out. This is the old turbo intake tube and actually I used like a bead roller on here and it seemed to work pretty decent, but I'm trying to decide if I want something a little more aggressive, a little more of an edge to grab onto or not, but uh, might end up doing the same thing as well. Just trying to figure out what I need to do. And uh, if I do that, I'll need to buy like a little bead roll deal that does that on the pipes. You can buy them. And, and if not, I just weld them and then I kind of control how high that is, but I can't do any more welding since I'm out of gas. Something else I have been working on is running lines. I'm running out of fitting, so I need to get some more coming, but I got the lines ran over here, across here to the post filter, down the line, and then up here to where we're going to adapt them to two, uh, single 12 to two 12s, and then run it up to the top. I was going to go to two 12s up in the engine bay, but then you got a lot of fuel lines in one area, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it right there and then carry two fuel lines up to the rails and then we plumb out the fuel system. But first, I'm gonna need to get some more fittings coming. It's crazy how many fittings and pieces and I got a box full of them here, but uh, they're dwindling and I need more dash 12s because this is mostly what is used in this car. It took a few minutes, got the master cylinder fully mounted, so I gotta hook up the lines. I ended up getting it mounted in here as well. Ended up using a Heim, like what comes off the back of the Willwood. I got a shorter stud that comes out of the back of it as well and then put a bolt in here and then welded a nut on the back side of the factory pedal so now we got pretty much all we need right there for travel so like i mentioned at the beginning of this video it's just a bunch of little things i'm just working around on the car something i think i want to do now is try to pop out the heater core block off panel and I would like to start putting all my like wiring studs and everything there. I have like the starter stud that goes through the firewall into the engine bay. I have some distribution blocks for ground and power. And then I also have five volt ground and sensor ground out of the holly. So I have my distribution blocks for sensors. So I kind of want to get those all in place as well. So like the wiring is just slowly, instead of doing all at one time, we're kind of just putting things in place then we'll hook everything up, which I'll go over everything with you guys, but I think on the wiring side of thing, it just, it, it's almost helps to see it from the end and then work it backwards. So at least you can kind of visually see what's going on instead of step by step, because until you know where you end up, it's hard to understand that. All you end up with is a ton of wires anyway. So that's why we're doing everything we can to get the wires all set up. But man, I'm thinking this is pretty cool. I'd almost run the car without a dash in this dang thing. So I think it looks pretty sweet. The red holly really pops. It's pretty awesome. So I guess I'll go ahead and try to get that panel out. Got the panel out of the car. Outside, of course, inside with the lizard skin. So these are the mounts for the catch can. I already made the center hole for where I want to put this sills it grommet. And I think we're going to be somewhere about like that. And then I'm going to actually run the main wiring from the race pack through here. The main wiring for the holly comes up through the cow so that it can come out to the center of the engine. And then I'm actually gonna use this hole here for the water line. After a couple minutes of unboxing everything and setting it on here, I think this would make sense. So you have your main harness that comes over, goes out here. You have a wire from the battery that comes here for ground, a wire that comes from battery here for power. Do a short jumper over to this, and that will go out to the fire, out to the starter. And then these here are not for 12 volt power and ground, but sensor power and ground. So the Holly has like a hot lead for five volt and then a sensor ground, which is not chassis ground, it is separate. So I figure I bring that, it's an orange wire, bring it over here, tie it to this. And then any sensor I add, say like a back pressure sensor or coolant pressure sensor or drive shaft speed or anything like that for any sort of additional thing, shock sensors, it would come pick up five volt here, it'd pick up ground here, those two would go together, run to the sensor, and then that other wire would come back from the sensor and go to an input on the ECU. So you have a ground location, a power location, starter, five volt, five volt, and then I'm 
thinking I do not need, hopefully, a keyed source because the race pack does all the keyed features. So ignition on, you tell the race pack to tell it. When ignition is on, turn this, 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 and this on. If not, turn, don't turn this, this, and this on until this, this, and this happens. So I believe I can get away from not needing the daisy chain or like use a block like this for like keyed power. And literally as I'm saying that, I'm thinking, okay, what about the Holly Dash? It needs a keyed 12 volt. Well, it might not get that. So I do have a little expansion pack from the race pack. I need to decide to figure out. I think that might just be inputs, but uh, those are some of the things I need to figure out because I'm still thinking of things that might need a 12 volts, might need a key 12 volt that's kind of standalone and not part of the race pack, but also part of the Holly that needs it and all that type, sort of stuff. So um, we'll figure that out as we get there, but I think this is gonna work for now. Worst case scenario, I add another little block somewhere or uh, right here or whatever, or inside the car for like keyed at 12 volt. While I slow down, not put too much heat into the paint on the backside. Not bad, looking pretty good. I'm worried about the paint, but I think that's gonna be okay. I've never actually used a seal zip before, but I've seen people use them. They're pretty sweet. You just kind of poke whatever hole you need in them. Super stretchy, really durable, and then they protect your wires going through the firewall and also seals the firewall. So uh, nice little pieces. We're gonna we're gonna give them a try. I ordered a couple for this build, and if I need more, I'll get more. But I figured why not try it? It's one thing I try to do on every build is take it one step further on everything. Which this is like seven steps further on any sort of wiring I've ever done. But you know. The fab, the work, the parts, just everything. Just always trying to make it a little bit nicer, a little bit better, and obviously a little bit faster. Looks like it's a two and a quarter hole, and all I had was two and an eighth, because when I put this through there, I can't get quite past this little lip, which, what's nice about it is, if the lip did go through there, then you wouldn't have the edge of the metal to rub your metal, or for your wire to rub on. So, I guess you need to just dribble this until this gets cleaned up enough, where this will pop through there. Got the seals it riveted in on the panel. It's not too bad. And then I'll figure out how big of a hole I need to actually puncture in this. And I guess these stretch quite a bit, depending on how much wire you run through. But uh, now I can go ahead and move on to drilling some of these other holes. And then I'll get some hardware first thing in the morning to get those all mounted up. And bam! So now we got our power lug. We'll get the other ones mounted when we have hardware. And uh, I will have, it's kind of going to be a little ugly now because you got all those little holes kind of coming through, but I'll try to get some nice hardware. So it's either just a nylon nut on the back side or whatever, just to keep it kind of nice and clean. Uh, don't show a lot of screws, just you'll see the little, you know, the nuts or whatever. And hopefully that's it. Keep it as clean as possible. Probably go with like a black or even maybe a black chrome. So then it just kind of hides it. I mean, it's not really hiding it being on white but at least it looks nice. It just doesn't look like regular hardware. Back the next day with some hardware and got everything mounted up. Not fully in love with the look on the backside, but it'll work out. Some of this stuff can be covered up anyway by like the catch can and then there's gonna be other wires and lines ran and everything else. So I'm gonna get that put back in and then I'll move on to some more wiring here soon. But otherwise, that's a quick update for you guys when I throw out this video and kind of get you guys caught up on everything we've been working on. Like I said, it's a ton of little things and it's all those little things at the end that take the most time it seems like, right? So. I think in the next video, we might be trying to grab the hood, put it on this thing and get it fit up and mocked up around this ridiculous intake. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next one.